to see this thing running right now when we're trying to get ready for harvest, but uh, you remember that piece that we have all that manure being spread on? Well, we didn't spray it because we figured they'd get done spreading it soon enough and then we could till it in before harvest. Well, they're still trying to till it in, or still trying to spread it. Well, the weeds are growing pretty high and spraying it's not gonna do anything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that five and a quarter bud and we're gonna hook it up to our disc and he's just gonna mulch those weeds down. And the ground's so hard right now that he's not really gonna dig deep, but we just need to chop the weeds up. Let's go get the disc. Well, we're here at the heavy disc and you can't even hardly see it. It's underneath all the weeds. If we did not spray the crops, this is what it's gonna look like. There's so many weeds that you can't grow any good quality, well, product in it. And uh, yeah, it's a mess. But he's backing up, let's hook him up and uh, let's go chop some weeds. We walked around it, just inspecting, make sure there, there's nothing concerning. It's used, there's things that need to be fixed on it. For, but for 80 acres, it's gonna run just fine. We got some tires gotta fill up here, and then uh, there's a whole bunch of barbed wire that got wrapped around the axle, and so he's just chopping that away. So we'll grease it, check the tractor over, put fuel in it, grease that as well, and uh, let's go chop some weeds, kill them, slice them up, mulch them, destroy them. You're probably wondering why aren't we using the 600 bud? Well, we haven't welded the drawbar support bracket and we just haven't had the time to. This tractor's ready to go, so we just hooked onto it because we got harvest, we gotta get going on. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little hard, but uh, you might have to go over it two times and just chop off all the weeds. It's uh, not digging very deep. We were hoping when they finished spreading this that there'd still be moisture and we can dig it in, till it in, um, but it's not doing as good a job as we were hoping. You look down, this kosher weed right here hasn't been chopped completely off and it's gonna keep growing. There's many, many of those around here that's still alive after he ran over it one time. So he's gonna to have to hit it again to try to chop them off. There's gonna be survivors, but hopefully we can get the vast majority of, majority of them. Um, we really need to have more moisture in the ground to really till this in. And if that disc right there had moisture, it would dig down deeper and it would actually chop the roots and chew it up pretty good. But it's just kind of riding on the surface right now. So a couple times over and uh, we'll be good. But love having this manure. It's great stuff. Still plowing or actually disking uh, this uh, field here and picked up a couple hitchhikers that came along the way. Uh, no, it wasn't Kobe and his friends, but it's actually my granddaughters. Hi. Okay, Hi. what's your name? What's your name? Hey. Addy? Nora. I'm Nora. I'm Nora. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, you first time riding in the mud? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, this is really small, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. But this thing is like, 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 I thought it was like, going to be like, like, the store. And one for this, and then do it. <laughs> okay, so you're on a tight seat. It's made a seat made for one and two of you are sitting on it, right? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, yep. Yep, we're uh, 
Um, getting a chunk of this done. Uh, knocking some of these weeds down. Not killing them all, but uh, we're definitely making an uh, impact on it. And we'll come back with a, a cultivator with uh, some plow shears, uh, probably after harvest, and work it. And then we'll just see if it's uh, uh, right to go ahead and see winter weed on this uh, piece. So, but yeah, it's uh, almost uh, the ultimate uh, cover crop that we're plowing under. There's a lot of cover, but it's not a crop. Okay, where's Kobe? Kobe's over there. Is he there? Yeah, he's right there. If a rabbit jumps up, do you want me to have Kobe run after it or you guys? Nice. You, you want to run after the rabbit? No, <laughs> I didn't get it. Gonna give a shout out to, yeah, Zach Woods. Zach, if you're uh, happy to watch this video, yes, uh, you uh, you got acknowledged. Uh, your name is in this tractor. And for those who don't know, uh, Patreon is a, a a type of YouTube service that uh, you can subscribe to to our channel. Different levels, and when you get into certain levels, um, you get to. Um, have the equipment of your choice put your name on it and then once in a while in the videos when we're running that piece of equipment your name will be shown so appreciate it Zach uh, for the channel so anyway I'm trying to think of some other questions uh, that it, uh, I've read in the comments whatever about uh, the big buds uh, the what's nice about these big buds are that the you do not have to unhook anything in the cab to raise the cab. The cab is hitched in the back, has hydraulic ram cylinders that will uh, jack you jack the cab up, and the hood will come up um, uh, against the uh, hinged at the radiator. So what that does is leave all the whole powertrain open for maintenance, for uh, hoses, linkages, um, the engine's more accessible, the transmission, you can drop the transmission and put a new one in it. And last year, uh, about over a year ago, uh, many of you saw that we were able to put a transmission in this in a day, uh, under $2,500 when we got done with the new clutch. So, and we only missed probably six, seven hours. So, that's what's sweet about this, these, uh, these tractors. They just run, they're comfortable. The cab's very, uh, had air conditioner works very well. It's not very loud. Uh, lots of room. Um, Kobe loves it. Kobe, do you love it? Huh? In the meantime, you guys can go ahead and watch all those commercials that come up. Um, yeah, we can't set those commercials. They're set by uh, YouTube, so sorry about that, guys, but that's just life. So anyway, we'll catch you on the rerun. Just when you thought we were done drilling holes. No. Nope. Got two bins to put here. We're building the bases for the legs, and then we're going to pour a flat slab across the whole thing. After those are filled up with concrete, rebar, everything good to go. I gotta clean that off, one second. Whew, just wrap that up. That sure beats digging holes by hand. I'll show you guys why we're doing this. If you haven't seen the older videos from like two years ago, there's a reason why we're digging these holes. It saves on concrete and uh, should make for a nice foundation. But let's load this, uh, this bit up. To make moving bins and setting up hoppers more economical, one of the big costs is concrete. So you can see we did that here. We drilled down and put 24 to 30, 30 inch diameter concrete pillars 
and then set the bins on top. And so far these have been holding up really well. We've had these full about three or four times now. No sagging, no moving, no nothing. Seems to be a pretty good fit. We also made sure it's on pretty good ground. So there's not a lot of organic matter in this. Um, we, we packed it pretty hard, but that's what's gonna happen over there. The only difference is over there is we're still gonna put a slab on the top, not a thick slab, just a couple inches enough to maintain a nice area to clean the fertilizer off because uh, fertilizer's a lot easier to clean off the ground when it's on concrete, you can sweep it up. When it's in the dirt, you can't really do much about it. So you gotta leave it. So that's kind of the plan. It'll look nice too. It'll be uniform with the look of those meridian bins. Those meridian bins on the other hand though, we didn't do that with those. We built these, uh, I forget the term for it, but big cement pad that, uh, that has a lot of concrete in it. It costs quite a bit. So hopefully this will be a little cheaper, a little easier, easier to form up and get the job done. But let's get back to get ready for harvest because that's what's going on right now. Well, getting closer to harvest, but uh, we got to get a few things taken care of before uh, we really get busy. And one of the things is uh, cultivating our shelter belt or our row of trees uh, that uh, hasn't been for over a month and the weeds are getting fairly good size. So I'm going to take the trusty JD4520 and hook it up and uh, we'll go ahead and... Uh, Get some more weeding done. Uh, we call it plowing the shelter belt, but uh, I know the correct term is cultivating. So, but anyway, let's get this thing started. I think I'm gonna have a smoking good time. Oh, looks like mom's been running the lawnmower too hard these days. Yeah, she has. She's a, what we call on the farm, a Moabite, a Gentile, very Gentile. <laughs> what the deal is, is she mows so fast that she mows on two wheels on the corners mm -hmm. and it's putting a lot of pressure on the front and it just, and it bowed it out. So it was trying to go two different directions. So we took the lawnmower away from her, gave her a push mower until we can get this fixed. Yeah. That was uh, two months ago. <laughs> no. He's gonna lay some angle iron up on here, weld up a couple cracks, strengthen it up, put it back together again, and uh, get it rolling, because yes, there's some mowing that needs done. Yeah, and she'll be back to being a cut above the rest. Well, now we're getting back to the combine stuff. I was thinking about it. Australia, that's a big place. There's a lot of combines down there. In fact, one of the best combine operators and experts that comes up in this area once a year to help us fine tune these bad boys. Um, he's from Australia and he is the combine guru. But you wanna know something really sweet about Australia right now? FBN, Farmers Business Network, who uh, we've been a part of for a little while now, great company. They're in Australia, they just expanded Australia. So if you are a farmer and you're in Australia and you'd like to be a part of FBN, you can. I would recommend it. So if you want to, check it out and use the promo code Welker100 and you can get a hundred bucks off your membership. Is that Australian bucks or US bucks? I don't know, do you guys even have bucks? You've got ruse, kangaroos, ruse, right? Ruse, is that the correct term, ruse? We don't have any ruse here. I'm a little jealous because if you had ruse here, then all of our vehicles would look cool like yours. We'd have all those sweet bumpers and stuff, but we do have bucks and sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small. But anyways, if you wanna save a hundred bucks, Yes, Welker 100, use the promo code. Link in the description below. Cool, FBN, Australia, check it out.